Hi, thanks for watching the Chickpea Channel. I'm Trisha, and behind the cameras is David from Living Tech. Today I'm going to make some pesto. Um, when you go and find pesto in the grocery store, um, often in the jars, usually in the jars, they also put parmesan in, so not vegan. You can sometimes find in the produce section in the refrigerators there, uh, pesto without any cheese in it is really good but it's, um, it's lighter, it's summer fair, um, it has preservatives and everything in it. So I'm gonna show you how to make a cheesy tasting whole food vegan pesto, which you can make the star of your dish or you can use um, as more like a condiment. Um, I'm gonna be serving it with pasta and I'll show you the additions I'll be using and um, some alternatives that you can choose. So the first things first is the basil. Um, I need about two cups of fresh basil. I'm just showing it to you like this in case this is what you get. Um, it's a little sad. So when that happens, um, it, it means it's a little dehydrated. I'm not gonna do it because um, it'll take a bit of time. But if it's like that and uh, you wanna puff it up a little bit, you can soak it in water for a little bit. It'll absorb the water and be all happy again. Okay, so meanwhile, what I'm gonna do is uh, show you, it's probably intuitive, but I'm gonna show you, this isn't the greatest basil, it's not seasonal, I could have done this in the summer, but I really like pesto and I wanted to make it for you even though uh, it's getting uh, close to winter. Anyway, so, uh, you don't have to be really super careful with any kind of herb, um, but with basil in particular, so when they say de-stem it, they're talking about the thick stem, like that. So now I'm gonna wash this just like I would wash lettuce. I got this salad spinner right before I got married many years ago <laughs> and uh, it's really super useful. So if you don't have one, I would get one. You can measure it if you want to be careful, but you don't have to because it's going to be better if it has more basil. You can always add other ingredients. It's a very simple recipe, so you can always add more to your own taste if this volume is two and a half cups. Okay, special smaller blade. And then I'm just going to stuff these basil leaves in here. So the next thing you're doing is adding your cheese replacement. It's, uh, it's called nutritional yeast. If you're not used to using it, um, it it's not exactly like eating cheese, but um, it's a pretty good facsimile. A lot of people put it on popcorn, some oil and then popcorn. Um, for this recipe, I'm gonna use four tablespoons. Four, three, two. Four, nutritional yeast, three, Walnuts or pine nuts. I use walnuts because they're a lot cheaper. Um, and also you can use pine nuts to, as a topping and then you don't get over pine nutted. Three garlic cloves, which I prepped ahead of time. So you do need to peel them. Don't really need to cut them. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. Purists would want you to use the fresh lemon juice, but I say this is easier and you'll be very happy with it. And a little bit of salt. I don't usually measure it, but I'm gonna do it with one eighth. Start with one eighth of a teaspoon. You know, it's not very much, it's almost like, so if you were just doing it, you didn't wanna measure, an eighth is like that in your hand. So that's probably about what I would normally do. So you want to get all the um, ingredients down fairly, fairly small, and then if, uh, so in my case, the nutritional yeast is sticking to the side a bit, and some of the leaves are uh, getting chopped. So I'm just going to uh, scrape the sides a little bit, and then we're going to add uh, some oil and probably some water. Okay, so a little bit longer. I'm happy with that because I like to have a little bit of the leaves left. Um, Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is one. So actually you could just go four, three, two with the lemon juice, one a tablespoon of olive oil to start. One, one glug is about a tablespoon in these kind of holders. The other thing about olive oil is if you really don't want to add oil, what I just did, you can do it with water. It's pretty pasty, but the, the pasta will be wet, as you know. Um, so I don't really think that this time 
I'm going to add any water. Um, but normally, if you're going to use it for, um, uh, well, a few of the other things I'll tell you at the end, uh, you might want to add some water. That's pesto. We're done. I'm using baby arugula. I'm going to put it right in the bottom. And that will be enough wilting with the very hot pasta that um, it won't feel like you're eating raw, but it won't feel like it got overdone. So I'm just going to put this right on top of the arugula. If you do this and you find it's not enough, then just uh, double the pesto, but use the bigger bowl. There's lots of green stuff in there. So if you're worried about having pasta or you didn't want to have so many carbs, remember you're getting, you know, the equivalent of a salad by the time you put in the basil leaves, that they're just ground up so they don't look like much. You've got the um, arugula, you've got the peas. It's a, it's a good amount of greens, plus the nutritional yeast is great for your immune system. Um, so that, and if you're still worried about it, then maybe just have something different for lunch because this is, this is great to have for dinner. But if you want it to look a little fancier, I do have a few pine nuts. I'll just put those on top. Things that you can use pesto on. Um, so I just use it on the pasta. You could use it on any kind of pasta. You could also use it on a spiralized zucchini, which looks like spaghetti. I'll show you that in another video. Um, it comes out with like a pasta dish, but with zucchini. You could use it um, before or after you roast some potatoes. Use it on the, instead of mayo, use it in a tomato sandwich. You can mix it with lemon juice and um, put it on green beans, cooked green beans. You can mix it into some butter, vegan butter. That's a bit of a cheat, but the vegan butter, put it on corn, put it on sweet potatoes, um, put it on the roasted potatoes that you were otherwise just gonna put the pesto on. And uh, one idea somebody gave me that uh, I hadn't thought of before is you can mix it in with, with your hummus. That makes it nice and light. Probably won't last as long in the fridge because of the greens in it, but um, if you're planning to uh, use up the hummus, that's a really nice addition to that. Okay, so enjoy your pesto. Don't forget to press subscribe.